Are you an atheist? No, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Can we talk about that on film? Can we, sir? Sure. All right, Sweet. cool. My name's Brenton, by the way. And what's your name? Salar. Salar, good to meet you. So we're speaking about spiritual things today, and you don't know what what happens after death. Do you think there might be an afterlife? Yeah, actually, our, one of our first like dates was in modern. Yeah, well. In terms of anything, will your soul go on after you die, or do you think you just go to the ground and that's it? I would say that after death, that's why I said I don't know. Okay. I genuinely don't know, and I feel like if I say the spirit continues, or both of them are assumptions in a way. Even if I say that, like I go in the ground and that's it, and I cease to exist, I feel like that's also an assumption. Do you believe that there is a God? A God, in terms of as a person controlling, or as like a any God? Do you believe in it? That there could be a God out there. Uh, supernatural, all-powerful, all-knowing, creator of the universe, and judge. Actually, get more people. Like you're giving like human qualities to a creator, like all-knowing, all-knowing human qualities. I don't, I don't think any human is all-knowing, but... No, like, knowing and peace, like, I know... So do you believe in a partially knowing God? I mean, I believe in the source of creation. Yeah, and what do you think uh, the creator is like? Well, not a person. Maybe, I don't, I don't think it would be a person. So, human beings, where did we come from? Were we created in the image of the creator, or did we evolve from a lower life form? Um, I would say we evolved. And what are you basing that on? Well, I took biology recently. Isn't that an assumption, too? I mean, they have... I mean, they... I haven't read enough on this, but I mean, there's a lot on evolution, and if you go into it the way the species, other species evolved, we don't look at that as some great thing, but we think we're special, that we were created in the face of the, the image of God. The image of God. Whereas all these other creatures are here, and they're equal as us, like the flowers are blooming. The birds are singing. So we don't think we're hold, making hold the phone. Things. You just said flowers are equal with us. Do you, you think that we're not any worth anything more than a flower? I mean, I mean, in terms of capability, like even birds can see <laughs> wavelengths that we cannot see. Did you know that? Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of capability, we're different species, but in terms of life, we're all the way. So, you don't think human life is worth any more than animal life? I think all life is worth the same. Okay, so let, let me give you a scenario and tell me how you would respond. Okay. Okay, uh, you're going to talk about you're in a pool, like, you're, You have a pool at your house, and a dog fall, falls into the pool who can't swim, and a baby falls into the pool who can't swim. You can only save one. Who do you save? You save the baby. Why is that? If I could just save one. I don't... If they're equal value, would that be a hard decision? I would. No, I would not. I would say, in terms of equal value, I mean like in terms of, in terms of what they are, not in terms, like, I feel like I'll, I'll be like jumbling up my words, but in terms of, I think they're all alive and they're all special in their own way, in terms of you don't need to compare them, but yeah, definitely. You have to make a quick decision, save the baby or the dog. You do have to okay. use discretion, you can't just... Yeah, if you have to make a decision, then obviously you have to pick one or another. And I'm sure people, some people really love their dogs. They would go, for, I'm not, I mean, Oh yeah, I'm yeah. asking this question because some people have said, I would save the dog. Yeah, so it's, in terms of Don't decision, you think the value of human life these days has been so uh, lowered that I mean, you could basically justify murder now? right? Like, like abortion. Isn't that killing of an innocent human being? I don't know too much about abortion and the medicine and all the science that goes into it. We're not really here to talk about yeah. abortion, but we're here to talk about ethics and morals and if there is a God and He gave us this sense of a conscience where we know what's right and wrong and we know instinctively, if you can't explain it, why saving a baby is the right thing to do instead of saving a dog. Because there's value and worth and dignity 
in, in that human being. And so that's why we're out here to talk to people honestly, because we care about people and we don't want anyone to perish, to die, and then go to a worse place after they die. We actually believe there is a heaven and a hell. I'm a Christian, Bible believer, full disclosure, and uh, we want people to know how they can get to heaven. So if the Bible is true, if, if Christianity is true, do you know the gospel message, what what uh, God requires to, to let people into heaven according to the Bible? Do you want to get something to go the way like treat others the way you treat others? Well, Jesus said, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But he also said, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So if that is the standard perfection, none of us are good enough to get into heaven. I've not always loved my neighbor as much as I love myself. I love myself to a fault, not others enough. Would you say you're the same way? Naturally, we are more selfish. Okay, so that's why God gave us the Ten Commandments, is to show us that what is right and wrong, and also to show us when we do wrong, that we need a savior. We need a, someone to uh, forgive us from that sin. And so, can I explain the gospel, that what, what God's standard is according to you? It'll just take a couple of minutes, and then I'll like to have your thoughts on it. So according to the Bible, God created man, woman, in his image, and they reproduce and have children. But Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, I believe they're literal people, they had a choice to rebel against God or uh, obey Him, but they chose to rebel. They ate that no, forbidden fruit, good. and because of we that, had death that came into we? the world. God said, in the day you eat of it, you'll begin to die, you'll surely die. And that's where, that's why there's death in the world, that's why there's corruption and evil. And that's, that's not God's heart, it's not what God wants. He wants to have a relationship with us, and, and that one that, a relationship that lasts forever. But since man began to die, God gave a promise in the very beginning saying, I will send someone, a descendant of this woman, who will crush this, the head of the snake, Satan, who tempted Eve. And the snake will pierce his heel. Do you have any idea who that might be speaking of? That's in the very third, the first book of the Bible, the third, uh, what? I believe it's referring to Jesus, who was pierced through the hands and feet uh, on the cross. But in being pierced on the cross, he dealt the death blow to Satan because Satan only has power over people uh, when they uh, are in sin because they're separated from God. But Jesus took our place on the cross. He was the perfect man, the only good one who lived what he said, be perfect. And yet, he died on the cross to take the punishment for us. In other words, I stood before a judge guilty, and Jesus came in as my advocate, not only defended me, but took my punishment so that I wouldn't have to be separated from God, so I could be reconciled to God. Back to that original plan of that peaceful relationship with God. My creator, as his creation, I can know him if he reveals himself to me. And so we believe that God revealed himself through the person of Jesus Christ, that he is God in human form. That's why he's called the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He had no human father. It is God entering into humanity to save humanity. Like that drowning baby that can't do anything to save itself, we're all dead in our trespasses and sins. And the only way to be forgiven is if someone perfect dies for our sins and then rises from the dead because the dead Savior can't save you. Jesus rose from the dead after three days and over 500 people witnessed him, touched him, ate with him. In other words, he gave scientific proof that he was alive after there was scientific proof that he died. They pierced his side and blood and water came out. Are you familiar with that story? So what we believe is that there is a God and he's our creator. And he determines what's right and wrong. So since he is, we all give an account to him when he died. From God we came and to God will return. But he can't just let anyone into heaven. He, there has to be a solution to that sin problem. And unless Jesus takes away our sin, we'll have to pay for our sins ourselves. And that's why there's a place called hell. First of all, God created hell for the devil and his angels, the demons. A third of the angels that rebelled against God will go there. But they're trying to deceive people into believing all kinds of weird stuff that's not, not true, self-contradictory. Evolution is one of those lies, I believe, that makes people feel like they can reject God because they can explain away the need for God. 
But you also need God well, for eternal life. Not just to explain where you came from, but to know where you're going after you die. And we can know, not just by assuming, but Je Jesus rose from the dead, will rise from the dead as well, the Bible says. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So, there's two things that Jesus said you must do in order to go to heaven. And it's not, uh, you know, do unto others as you have done to, to, to you, because we've already failed that. Here's what he says. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent means to change your mind about the way you're living and your, your attitude toward God. And trust the gospel. The gospel is the good news that I just explained to you. The whole story of God's will for humanity and for the earth. He doesn't enjoy uh, seeing people and animals die for that matter. But because of Adam's sin, there's death in the world. So if you repent, that means turn to God and trust in what Jesus did to save you, not in your own goodness, then the Bible says you'll call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. In other words, pray, saying, God, I believe you're there. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. Would you please forgive me for all that I've done against you and give me that gift of eternal life. I cannot earn it, but thank you for offering it to me as a gift. I receive that gift. I pray that you receive me when I enter into the kingdom. Like you don't believe that believing is the right way. Yeah, I don't think it really solves. I can believe in it, it's up to you. Quite a few people, if you go around the world, there's so many different but not everything that people believe in is true. So that, that doesn't help know, them if it's not true. I know, I know. That's the thing about belief. It can not be true. And people can still spend their lives devoted to it. Another thing is that this whole emotional death being a negative thing is very... I don't know why death is a negative thing. I mean, it's the only thing that really gives value to your life. I mean, if you were to live forever, then you could live... You don't really believe that, do you? I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for your time. And I'm glad that you heard the good news. Please consider what I said. And I have your permission to put this on YouTube? Yeah, sure. I appreciate it. God bless you.